Hello, my name's Matt Cornock and I do dance photography for Ballroom Latin dance competitions. I've had a few requests um, asking me how do I get the photos that I do, so I thought I'd share you um, some tips here. Now my setup um, is a Nikon D90, it's a DSLR camera. Um, the kit lens with it is an 18 to 105 mil, that's 3.5 to 5.6, and it's also got vibration reduction on it as well. The close-up lens I use is a 55 to 200 mil, 4 to 5.6. This is actually the kit lens from my previous camera, my D40. The D40 was a 6 megapixel camera that performed quite poorly in high ISO. The D90 is 12 megapixels and it does work a little bit better in the high ISO range. And I'll tell you why that comes to importance um, in a little bit later on. The software I use is Paintshop Pro 8. It's cheap, it's old, but it does the job. Um, I also have a basic flash from Jessops which cost about £28. Essentially it's a relatively cheap setup. I'm not a professional photographer. My camera settings are set to manual, with a shutter speed no slower than a hundredth of a second. My aperture I set as wide as possible, except when I'm doing offbeat photos where I need longer depth of field to capture um, more of the stage in focus. Uh, ISO is set to high, that's 1250 to 1600, and, and then I make a decision about flash or no flash. And then the white balance is also set according to the location I'm in. Most locations you can get away with using the default um, settings that are on your camera. I don't mean using the auto setting, I mean setting it to either indoors or fluorescent lights or something along those lines so you get a consistent look to all your photos. Some places like Blackpool where they have very interesting lighting um, requires you to set your white balance manually and for IVDC 2011 I set my white balance to 9000K. OK, so let's look at some of the camera settings in detail. High ISO is needed in low light, especially without flash. This allows you to have faster shutter speeds which avoids motion blur. However, the trade-off is that high ISO creates image noise. So let's take a look at this example here. Now you might think, OK, that's a great photo, it seems OK, it's all in focus, nothing much to worry about. But if I was to blow that up to a large picture, you'll actually start to see the detail that comes through from the high ISO noise. And on this screen now, you'll see on the little inset the red patches um, on the black shirt, which is where the light has spilled over into different pixels and different receptors on the sensor. Because I've turned the ISO up, the sensor is more receptive, and this light gets spilt across the different um, pixels and subpixels. So, this is why we've got this patchy effect here. You can deal with this though, um, two ways of dealing with noise removal, either in camera or with software. In camera noise reduction tends to be a little bit like a sledgehammer to crack a nut because um, the approach they take aren't always suited to every image. For example in my D90 I set the um, noise removal to off or to low rather than normal or high because the high end uh, noise reduction in camera tends to average out the entire image so I could lose details in the hair or in the sparkles of, of a dress because of that. The other approach is to use software and PaintShop Pro has a tool called um, Edge Preserving Smooth which removes noise but keeps the uh, lines of, um, or keeps the edges I should say, um, of, a, of a subject. The other camera setting to consider is flash or no flash. Um, you can only really do without a flash in good light. Here's a photo from Sheffield and um, Sheffield has some very good lighting. It's very even, the same colour and um, you can tell here that actually the skin tones are okay and the background's all set up okay. And I think the white balance for this was set to fluorescent lights and that's why you get this quite naturalistic look. In Blackpool though, they have um, a lot of ambient light which is full of colour. Now this is obviously a strength when you're looking at backgrounds, but when you're looking at your subject, you've got a problem. These two people here come out very, very blue, and if we set the white balance um, after we've taken the photo to correct for this, then the background gets washed out and it goes a green colour. So there are two ways we can solve this problem. Uh, the first way is with direct flashes. With uncontrolled, cheap or built-in flashes, those ones that pop up on your camera or just ones that you can't really do much with that are external flashes, they tend to produce poor results. So for example this photo here you'll see the background's very much darkened and the subjects pop out and it creates a very false impression of the, of the environment. 
Alternatively, when you've got a direct flash, you might also experience overexposure in the subject and the background actually um, whitewashes out as well. Um, and again, you lose all that depth and the colour that goes with the background. So using a diffused flash will give a balance between the foreground and the background. This photo here was taken with a diffused flash. The subject is still very clear and they're well lit, but the background you still got all that lovely colour and detail in there as well. So for the poor man's diffuser, um, and I, I say this because you'll see the professionals go around with ring flashes around their lens which are very expensive and some professionals also have much more finely controlled direct flashes that they can do more with. Uh, the poor man's diffuser um, is a cheap external flash. Uh, cover up the red distance meter, that's the little red light that flickers uh, when you're using autofocus and that is incredibly irritating to the dancers so I cover that up so I don't annoy them especially when they're very close to you and I use a bit of pure white paper and you get something that looks like this now it's not very pretty it might be considered slightly embarrassing in fact but it works and actually for the 30 quid you'll spend on that flash unit well you get the job done anyway so the camera settings you need to find the right balance between high ISO noise, the flash effect, and getting good colours, sharpness, and an interesting image. When you're shooting, you need to decide what type of photo you want to shoot. So different dances require different approaches. And this comes down to um, even, the, and even the type of dance will require different lens. I'll show you some examples in a second. You need to consider the shape, the lines, the movement, the colour, and what you intend to capture whether it wants to be portraiture or artistic, whether you want to capture stillness or movement, uh, personality or the dance. This photo here is a typical portraiture style photo. The subjects are very well lit. You can tell there's a flash that's been used. and We're not too worried about the background that's going on behind them, but you get some sense of warmth and colour coming out of that dance photo anyway. This photo here is using a wide angle lens where I'm quite close to the subject um, and particularly with samba rolls as well, you need to, when, you, when the dancers come in front of you, you need a wide angle lens to make sure you capture the full essence of that dance. So here's a samba roll, I'm not worried about the blurring, I want to capture the movement um, of this particular dance. Tango is an interesting one because the lines are actually quite boring from my point of view. So I prefer to stick on a close up lens, get the expressions from the dancers, and as you can see it's a more interesting photo. Something like a waltz or foxtrot where you've got um, wonderful lines like this coming out, make sure you get some space around the dancers. Get a wide angle lens on um, from a distance that you can get this sort of photo. Close up lens again for dances where the steps are more restricted as in uh, beginners and novice. You want to focus on the dancers actually having a good time and you can see here that you need to make sure the faces are crystal clear and um, there's actually a nice shape and a nice frame to, to uh, what's going on here as well. And finally, when all else fails, look out for those dancers who are actually having a good time because they're the photos that give an impression of the atmosphere of the competition as well. Um, I've seen quite a lot of photos where people look quite glum and actually I, I just don't put them online because I don't want to look at people that are looking quite glum, I want to look at people that are having a good time. And So a big tip for, for, for you would be to look through the viewfinder don't use the LCD on the back of your camera. Use the viewfinder to frame your shot. Um, it gives you a sense of a border, it gives you a sense of where those people are going to fit on the, on the photo. Track your dancer around the floor just like you would with a video camera and this will get you starting to read the dances, read the sorts of movements that you need to be getting used to. Get you practicing zooming in and out in time with the motion around the floor. Only take the photo when you have the right shot. Avoid taking hundreds or thousands of them all at once and this can be easily done when you've got your shutter set to a high repeat rate so when you press the button you take five shots. You're not going to get the best photo. Waiting for that moment and taking that one shot from that the right moment is what's going to make your photo stand out. So consider when you take that or when you're deciding to take that one shot the shape, the faces, can you see their faces, can you see their eyes? The traffic that's around them by other competitors, you know, are they being, um, is, is, the, is the scene too busy? Are you not going to make sure that your subject stands out? The space around the subject, are their elbows, heads in between the couple from other competitors that are evading their personal space? And also the lighting, make sure that there's no um, direct light unless you really want it, or, you know, just make sure there is enough light there to begin with as well.
So here's two examples of bad photos um, from my point of view. The one on the left, um, you can see that apart from the flash issue, which has considerably overexposed them, um, they're facing the wrong way, essentially, and actually that's not going to be a very interesting photo for them or for anyone else. So when I take a photo like that, I delete it immediately. The photo on the right, um, this one's a bit more complex because in first glance you think, oh, that's quite a nice colourful photo, it shows the dancers and particularly in the background as well, you've got that lovely um, sense of atmosphere and, and environment around you. But the subjects, they're not very clear. The, the lady on the left there is looking away and Normally you can get away with, with the dancers looking away as long as the outline of their face is crystal clear. This one isn't, it's slightly blurry, you've got some motion blur on there. And then of course the chap's got a fist up his nose, so um, that's obviously not going to be a very good photo of him. So actually this would be another photo that I'd ditch. And when you're taking thousands of photos, which you would do at an event, these sorts of photos are the ones you just completely discard because they're not going to add to the whole collection. When you're shooting finals and demonstrations, you get a little bit more flexibility. You can take advantage of the ample space around the competitors, and you can take your time waiting for the right moment. And there may be spotlighting as well, which allows you to reduce the ISO and increase your shutter speed. And the spotlighting offers opportunities for different types of photo. Again, decide on your intention for the photo as well, whether you want it to be artistic or close-up or wide angle. You know, how do you want that photo to look? So here's something from IVDC 2010, which is Chris Short and Lisa Chenar, who uh, did their demonstration dance. And here I've decided to frame them on the third, on the left third of the picture, to give a sense of performance. We can see very dimly in the background there's an audience there, but what I really want to show you is how it's standing out that dress. It's really a bright pink vibrant dress and the rest of the picture is pretty much black so you're immediately drawn to the subject but in the context of a performance environment with all that space around them. You can also see on the floor you get a few blue tinges from the ambient light and that wonderful reflection from the dress as well. Another example here from IVDC 2011, uh, the team match I believe, apart from the slightly orangey hue to that uh, picture which would need to be corrected to some degree. Um, you can see how these couple have a lot of space around them, they're in the right pose, we've waited until um, we can see both their faces and their frames in a nice position. So that's created a nice spacious photo for those two. And of the same couple actually, um, use of the spotlight here, the spotlight creates a halo effect around their faces, again waited until they're both facing um, the camera or we can see both their faces. We have their wonderful long line mirrored by that shadow of the spotlight on the floor as well. But at the same time we're not losing any of that wonderful detail of the ballroom with those um, side lights hung up there in the audience. Very dimly in the background, you know they're there but they're not overtaking the photo. So it all comes down to this. Who are your photos intended for? What is the intended user likely to do with them? And what I mean by that is what sort of size they need, whether they're going to print it or they're going to use it for Facebook, and the type of photo style, whether they want it to be portraiture or artistic. Now, the way I consider my photos when I take them is I want them to be slightly different. I want them to show the colour, I want them to show the environment, I want to show them the dancers having a good time. It's different, my approach is different from the professional photographers who are taking portraiture style photos. Because if you're a dancer who wants a portraiture style photo, you're going to want to blow it up big probably, you want to print it, probably print it out, you're going to pay money for it and um, obviously the professional photographers have the equipment to do this in a particular way that works. I can't do that so I offer um, my freebie Facebook photos because I'm looking at a slightly different, I'm taking a slightly different take on, on the actual event. I'm taking, um, I'm looking at the, the shape of the dance, the movement, the environment and the colours and they're the things that interest me. So I'm not too worried about taking portraiture photos. Um, I'm more interested in getting a little bit of enjoyment out of, of um, what the dancers are actually doing as well. So that's um, a quick overview of uh, the way I take photos. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that's been useful. Um, there's a couple of other um, tutorial videos um, about how you can manipulate your photos later on um, as well. Uh, for more information, go to mattcornock.co.uk.